I'm Max Tyler. I'm the state representative from House District 23. I represent Lakewood, Golden, and the areas that include NREL, Colorado School of Mines, and the gateway to our wonderful Colorado mountains. I'm hoping we leave this meeting today equipped with facts and scientific data so we can make decisions about our environment, our state, and our planet on behalf of our children and our grandchildren. Because ultimately, this is what this is really all about. You know, Colorado over the last few years has taken a pretty good approach to squeezing down our carbon footprint, creating a new energy economy, uh, making opportunities for renewable energy. But ultimately, what it's all about is our future for our children and what this planet is going to be like to be living on in the next 20, 50, and 100 years. And that's coming up sooner than you might think. Uh, I think, you know, if you think of 2030, that's way out there, but it was a lot longer ago in the past that I was going to college than what we're going to be facing in the future. So this this change in the world is going to be coming on us very fast. And that's what we're focusing on today. The key drivers behind the need for doing what we've been doing in terms of renewable energy. Why should we be doing this? Well, it's good for the economy. That's great. It's good for productivity. That's great. But the reason we're doing it is more connected with the dominion of the earth and taking care of our future and our generation's future. So that's what we're foc focusing on today. We're not going to be talking about the why, or I'm sorry, we are going to be talking about the why, we're not going to be talking so much about the how. This is not a policy day, this is not a day to talk about renewable energy, it's a day to talk about why we're thinking about renewable energy and why that's important. And we'll start with a basic premise. This is where we're starting today. The National Academy of Sciences has stated, Climate change is occurring. It's caused largely by human activities and poses significant risks for, and in many cases is already affecting, a broad range of human and natural systems. So what happens if we here in Colorado ignore the warning signs coming from nearly every unbiased scientific research organization on climate change around the world? We'll see tourism and agriculture seriously affected. Our beloved ski areas are already planning for less snow in the future. This statement from a professional in the ski industry in Aspen says it simply. Ski resorts operate in deficit until March, when we make most of our profit. If you shorten the season on either end, take away March, for example, and we go out of, then we go out of business. The problem, a shortened season, is one of the most reliable predictions of the climate modeling and science. That's from Auden Shedler from Aspen ski, Aspen ski Country. And of course, our drinking water, our landscapes, wildlife, and overall ecology of the state that we love is seriously threatened. We have an obligation for stewardship of the earth and a responsibility to our children and grandchildren to pass on a livable world. Recognizing our part in the disruption of global climate and mitigating the consequences is absolutely a moral imperative and is one of the strongest moral crises and challenges that we've faced over the last 100 to 200 years. Political rhetoric tends to get quite heated during these election cycles. However, to slow and ultimately reverse the causes of global warming will require a commitment to science to utilize the best data and research to inform our policy decisions going forward at both a state and a national level. Because we, once we lose the last of our glaciers, once the fragile species start to disappear, and once we lose our mountain pine forest to the bark beetle scourge, our world and our ecology has changed forever. How many of you in this room have watched a pika? How many of you heard pikas? Probably a lot more, you always hear them. Wonderful little creatures that live high in the rocks above timberline. But you know, as the temperature rises, we're going to get to a point where we don't have a 14,600 foot environment for the pikas to live in. They're, we're liable to lose them because of that. We have issues already with, as I mentioned, the pine bark beetle, um, the, the aspen are dying off. And they're starting to have evidence that that's caused by a slight increase in warming. 
So imagine Colorado without our forests. Imagine Colorado without our wildlife. And these will truly be rocky, nothing but rocky mountains. And I don't think that that's what we want for our wonderful state. What we're talking about today is not about political rhetoric. We're talking about <clears throat> science empirically determined in terms of what's going on with our climate and the influence of human behaviors. We cannot allow the mossbacks protecting their business turf or political parties seeking purely political gain to control this debate. This is debate is too important. We have an opportunity to literally save the world as we are tempered, disciplined, and collaborative in our approach. Here in Colorado, I'm committed to working collaboratively in a bipartisan way to put the people of Colorado ahead of the special interests that are trying to persuade us that what is clearly in our front of our eyes does not exist. In terms of energy production, Colorado we know is leading the way to a new energy future. We are at or near the top of the rankings of solar and wind potential, to say nothing of our vast natural preserves. We need to tap into every available resource in an environmentally conscientious and responsible way to move forward, create jobs, spur business and diversity from the perspective of the how. Today, again, we're talking about the why. You will hear from a range of specialists in the fields of climate change research. We are here to discuss recent scientific research data and discovery of the link between human activity and environmental change. I hope you find the day's speakers and discussion enlightening and informative. I encourage you to ask questions here and out in the world. We are the ones who can help mitigate the effects of climate change. Together, we are a powerful force.